Hi there, knife people. Hello, lady and gentlemen. Tonight, I'm going to talk about a conservative knife. And by conservative, I don't mean hopelessly out of style, old-fashioned, or completely detached from real-world realities. Actually, <laughs> on the left, the year is 2024. On the right is the decade between 1999 and 2011. Mike Henry & Williams, Benchmade 710. I just purchased the 2024 version through my regular source and the time capsule new in box 2011 version in D2 came to me through some circumstance and collector's luck. This model is the first knife ever to feature access lock. It is a sizable knife. Here it is next to 940 Osborne and Ritter Hogue or in this case, Griptilian. Here is how it compares to other large knives in my collection. AD10 by Cole Seal. Amanix 2 XL by Spyderco. Microtech Amphibian and Protec Murdax. And this is Iridium by Kershaw and uh, MSI by Microtech big knives. And if you wonder how it compares to other 25th anniversary of Access Lock models, here's Benchmade 710 limited edition anniversary model, number 119 out of 2500. And Benchmade Gold Class 710, number 197 out of 250. For weeks and months, I was anticipating the arrival of the production model. Of 710. Why? So that I can do these things to it. Lady and gentlemen, you are witnessing me setting the knife up in my Hype Smasher device. On my channel, all knives are looked at as a system. And the system intended for human use has to be safe. This device determines can a knife withstand a striking force of a fixed value on its spine. The distance between the pivot of the knife and the place where the ram strikes it is three and a quarter inches. The ram is a solid block of steel weighing two and a half pounds. The striking distance is six inches. The ram accelerates from zero to 3.8 miles per hour. What you see me do is make sure that the access lock is not impeded by the clamping device and the knife can unlock freely. This is a critical adjustment because if I didn't allow the knife to unlock freely, the lock failure would become impossible, making the test useless. As you can see, we're good to go now. One more thing. One of my subscribers recommended that I arrest the back of the handle of the knife so that it doesn't have any ability to move upwards. And this is what I'm doing here. I intend to strike the blade three more times and afterwards show all three strikes to you in slow motion. Checking the lock for function. The blade sits a little proud of the striking plane. That's why with my trigger finger, I move the ram head upwards into the well of the arbor press by the same distance. That is to make sure that no matter what shape of a knife I'm testing, the ram falls with the same velocity. The forces in the moment work out to be similar to what a 50th percentile male can exert striking with a backhand strike at a distance of six inches, which is a realistic scenario. Access lock has been one of the strongest locks in the market. And Benchmade recently upgraded the design. To illustrate, I removed the scale, and this is what the knife looks like inside. Now I'm removing the new updated Omega spring. I call it Omega spring because it's still shaped as an Omega. But as you can see, this spring is made out of flat wire and has little in common with the previous round wire Omega spring. I made comparative 
measurements between the two springs in a different video. Here's the excerpt. As you can see, the old spring has cross-sectional area of uh, 312 thousandths of a millimeter square, and the new one has a cross-section area of 500 thousandths of a millimeter square. Here's what we learned so far. The difference in the areas between the old and new spring is 38%, and the delta or difference in spring coefficients is only 8%. A stiffer spring with a higher coefficient, spring coefficient, and smaller cross-sectional area will be less tough, significantly less tough than the spring with a lower coefficient and larger cross-sectional area. Will it translate into improved reliability? Time will tell. If you enjoy sharpening knives, you can rely on Benchmade to provide a poorly structured edge for your sharpening enjoyment. On the left, you see my microscope and the blade, and on the right is the screen of my iPad, which projects the image from the microscope. That edge was quick ground and left alone. There's no evidence of stropping, or any other activity that would provide a good cutting capability straight out the box. Let's adjust the microscope and take a look straight onto the apex. So what goes into the edges cutting performance? First and foremost, the apex radius. The smaller, the better it cuts. Forming burr, seen here as shiny lines, is a good thing when you're sharpening, but you have to remove it Otherwise, you will be cutting into material with the burr rather than the apex, which in turn will pull the burr off of the apex. It may destroy the edge on a microscopic level, creating tears, cracks, and cavities that will later propagate into chips and rolls. A very well-known YouTuber, Neves Knives, published excellent videos on how to properly deal with the burr how to weaken it and remove it properly. If you don't follow his advice, all the hard work you put in a forming perfectly symmetrical edge will go to waste when you remove the burr. And speaking of symmetrical, this edge is not. You can clearly see that one side is shallower or more acute than the other. My estimate, keyword estimate, is 20 degrees on one side and 17 and a half on the other, which negates the beautiful recurve that they designed into the blade because recurve helps you with long cuts, but the asymmetrical edge will not allow you to cut in a straight line. You will be fighting it. The tip looks just slightly better than the one I did when I sharpened a knife for the first time in my life. And as you can see, it already has a chip. Let's drop the knife and see how it will perform after. I'm not going to even try cutting paper towels with this edge. On the production model, the blade is made out of CPM S90V. The steel is a particle metallurgy stainless powerhouse. It's designed specifically for edge retention and longevity which by putting a poor edge like this, you would negate. And therefore, you will not get what you pay for in this premium material. Stick around because thanks to my time capsule, like new in box, model 710, circa 2011, we'll find out whether the Benchmade edges gotten worse, stay the same, or got improved in the last 13 years. I will definitely resharpen the knife on my Workshop Precision Adjust Professional because its plates have a slight radius toward the edge, allowing me to sharpen even more severe recurves on such blades. As you can see, stropping removed some of the burr, not all of it, but let's give it a shot. On my channel, I cut paper towels unsupported, they're not attached to the roll, and this blade is kind of biting in, but I cannot develop a continuous cut. So 
I will have to definitely resharpen it. Some people argue that the heat treat is not the most important thing about the blade. But let me tell you, it does help because you can sharpen a properly heat treated blade a lot better than otherwise. The finish on the blade is some kind of deposited phosphate bronze finish potentially mixed with Cerakote. And uh, before I strip it off, I would like to test the tang of the blade with my portable tester. And later I will know if that makes any difference, the presence of the coating that is. This tester has an arrow of plus or minus 0.2 Rockwell hardness point. So technically speaking, it's slightly more accurate than the floor models. And that is because it relies on statistical analysis of a sample of five strikes, which in this case yields the hardness of 55 and a half points, plus or minus 0.2. And I'm not surprised. What I'm peering at here up close is the divots. You can see metallic sort of shin where the probe struck it. With the use of trivial sandpaper, I removed the coating from both sides of the tank. This tester requires a certain thickness of material underneath the blade, and that's why I'm adding uh, an incompressible gel into the mix. That makes sure that any cavities caused by imperfections in the blade flatness are taken up by an incompressible fluid, making it into pretty much a solid block. This was recommended by one of my subscribers, and I can't find the comment he left, so make yourself known, please. I'd like to give you a shout out. Made my life a lot easier. Before we start jumping to conclusions, let's uh, validate the calibration here. This block is certified to be at 58.7 Rockville. It was supplied with a device. So I'm going to strike it five times to see how far off is the error. With five strikes average, I should be getting plus or minus 0.2. And the average was 58.5. So it's 0.2 under. As you recall, the blade measured 58.7. So I'll give it to you in terms of range. On the steel manufacturer's website, Crucible Industries recommends 58 as a balance point between toughness and wear resistance. I prefer slightly higher heat treat because the knife's geometry is robust, so toughness is less of a concern and I would like to get edge performance for the money. Let's take a short break from Rockwell hardness testing and look at the differences between the old knife on the right and the new one on the left. Starting with the bronze washers, the size changed. They became smaller. There's evidence that Benchmade used to know that countersunk screws exist and not every screw has to be a button head. Pardon my band-aid, by the way, such is the life of a knife reviewer. This is a beautifully made D2 blade. Yes, you heard it right. I put D2 and beautiful in the same sentence. I like the steel. They removed the cavity that was required for a mega spring because the flat spring fits in flush with the liner. No need for cavity. Should make machining a little easier. Another difference here is the stop pin is fully captive and it's a free floater on the old model. It's an improvement. What is mystery to me is why they coated the corrosion resistant blade and left D2 in the white. And speaking of D2, let's test it. Applying that gel again. Thank you again. Please make yourself known. And thank to all my commenters and uh, people who donate through super likes. I appreciate it. Really helps the channel. So here we go. I always forget to switch it to Rockwell Hardness. Crucible recommends 59 for D2. I personally would prefer it at 61 because with a robust blade geometry, I think we can handle 
a little less toughness. Especially because I'm a sharpness junkie, this device detects when you're striking too close to the previous divot and gives you that error message. And look at that, my average is 61. So let's recheck the calibration just because we have all the time in the world and see if we are still in the same range as during the test of our S90V blade. And the zero shifted 0.2 above, which is within the tolerance for this device. And so conservatively speaking, here's the range. So the new blade gets a B plus and the old one an A. Next, let's find out how sharp Benchmade 710 came in 2011. Here's your secondary bevel. Right away I see evidence of stropping. Slight convexity right at the apex there. Almost like a tertiary bevel. And uh, let's check out the symmetricity here. I don't need to measure anything. Clearly it's asymmetrical. Yeah, by quite a bit. And uh, let's check out the tip. No comment necessary. Perhaps it cuts better than the new one. Nope. It's not even trying to get in. On my channel, there are several videos compiled in a DIY or do-it-yourself tutorial. Here's the link. And uh, in these videos, I cover in uh, excruciating detail how to set up a knife on a device such as this Worksharp Professional Precision Adjust or Worksharp Precision Adjust Elite. Here are some pointers. It's a lot easier to set up a blade without a handle. You don't need to worry about centering the blade in the vise. On any knife, and especially Benchmade, you should always remove the thumb studs because they invariably get in the way of the sharpening media carrier. And you should not be concerned at all whether or not your blade's edge or spine is parallel to the jaw of the vise. What I've done here, I set the blade up in such a manner that from tip to ricasso and throughout the entire length of the blade, the maximum angle difference is 0.3 degrees. That takes care of having the secondary bevel the same width throughout the entire blade. And there are other sharpening tips in my tutorials, like this one, for example. And here we are with a fully reassembled and beautifully sharpened knife. I even polished the washers, they are a little bit. Patina. Let's see what it does. As usual on my channel, unsupported paper towel. Yeah. Here it is in slow-mo. I encourage you to try this at home with your sharpest blade. How slicey is this 120,000 thick? and three and seven eighths inch long blade. For a big knife like this, she'll do. And here's the fruit of my labors under the microscope. I did not take it down to mirror polish deliberately. I just think aesthetically the 600 grit looks better with a bright aluminum handle and the matte bronze finish. Let's look at the other side. I did hone the entire width of the secondary bevel with a ceramic plate provided with a kit. And you can see the smallest striations from honing plate. And now I would like to see how symmetrical my secondary bevel is from one side of the blade to the other. So 52 thousandths on this side. And let's see, it's a beautiful grind. 
I get 48 thousandths of an inch, and this translates to about one third of a degree difference. Let's take a look at the tip. I did the best I could with the chip provided by Benchmade, and now I zoomed in to show you what a properly sharpened apex should look like. Precision. Well, I would like to hit a couple highlights. Beautifully built knife. They, I love that they kept the recurved blade. I really, really like from aesthetic and technical standpoint the new access lock. This is brilliant. There are a couple of things that I'm not crazy about. For example, heat treat could have been a couple HRC points higher. But they're very conservative in their heat treats. They do not exceed manufacturers' recommendations, the steel manufacturers, that is. Price is horrible. For the same type of materials and the same amount of parts, and maybe even more premium parts than this knife, an amphibian, the basic plain blade amphibian, will set you back maybe 280 bucks which is solid $170 cheaper than this knife. I would like to do one more knife comparison. It's another great American company's knife. Kersha Lunch 20. Magna Cut, aluminum, real carbon fiber, automatic. That video is coming out shortly and everything you saw me do in this video will be done to this launch 20 plus a disassembly reassembly tutorial so ladies and gentlemen here we are a knife that's beautifully designed 25 years ago nicely redesigned with a new lock today an extremely poorly executed edge here's a late production knife and i can say the same almost the same exact thing about that that's from the previous decades. Benchmade, please invest into your people that do the sharpening. Sorry about this. I had to censor myself at this point because I'm trying to keep this video professional, free of cussing and hopefully free of lawsuits. Because for the next minute, I was sharing with the world my views on how I feel about Benchmade removing a 30% discount they used to offer to military, police, and first responders, and changing it to a 15% discount, while raising prices to the point where most of hardworking Americans can't even touch the knife, basically overriding everything less the ACES stood for.